we got quite a bit of snow the other day, maybe about eight inches. It's already melted quite a bit and settled in, and the wind was pretty crazy. Um, wanted to show some more progress here. Uh, you will notice that the big tomato trellis that was here on the super long birdie's bed is no longer there. I'll post some pictures, but um, Jace was able to pull it out with the tractor on both posts. We still have the water post here um, that we're trying to figure out if we're going to leave for now until we figure out how that will really be set up. So we have two whiskey barrels in the back there and then the two nine and one birdies beds and this last eight and one birdies bed here, these three, um, that we need to um, pull out. So what uh, we're going to try to do today, although we'll see how messy it is, um, you'll see this one's kind of staged. We dig out like the first third of the bed and then Jace will bring out and install. <laughs> Don't mind the crunching of me walking on snow. Um, he'll install these brackets, um, which we can then use to lift up um, the bed from that stage. So we gotta dig out this bed and this bed and um, get them moved today. So we'll go back and forth between having the bucket on and the forks on the tractor today and uh, see how that that goes. Um, I do have some, uh, in theory, they probably all died now, but um, let's see. Some radishes underneath the snow. There you go. Um, so uh, these were a, kind of a test to see how, how early I could start the radishes. And they still seem all right. Um, so I've got radishes over there and here. Of course, Jace uses this as a, as a table, so it's a little different. Um, we also have this tunnel extended now. So it's, uh, what did I think? I'm trying to think, 20, 25 feet maybe? I can't remember. Um, so the tentative plan right now is to actually plant potatoes all the way here up until we get to the cattle panels. We decided not to extend the cattle panel part of this trellis. Though it would have looked really cool from a function standpoint of what we needed to grow because we repurposed the rectangular shaped eight and birdies eight and ones we wanted to make sure that I had enough space so this side will also get extended out um, hopefully to match. We're trying to track down a couple pieces of um, uh, panels um, to make it actually match lengthwise because we wanted it to be a nice line here. Um, and then we need to also finish putting the screws in this one and the supports and then fill this eight and one. Um, but yeah, so I'll have potatoes coming out here and here. And then this bed I think is gonna be sweet potatoes also. Um, so kind of this whole corner will be a potato area, which should be fun. We'll do beans and cucumbers and peas, which I need to plant the peas. I'm already kind of late planting those, but um, uh, on the trellis again, um, and maybe some long pie pumpkins. And uh, yeah, I've got the design layout, I think mostly figured out now, but um, things always change as you're, you're getting in and planting. All right, so I'm back in our tunnel. This is mostly unheated, but we do have a little space heater. This is probably not the safest setup. Um, this guy gets put onto the stone here, and his uh, extension cord is comes into the greenhouse here and goes to the garage there. Um, and we keep that for the nights that get cold. Um, most of the things in here are cold tolerant, which is um, on purpose and you can see because of the recent snowstorm and the temperatures um, I haven't been able to water very well in here um, so the ranunculus look a little bit funky this is kind of normal from what I ex have experienced is when I transplant out the ranunculus one was really leggy already and um, because I had had surgery I was way behind on on some things um, but you'll see like the old growth 
from the basement and then all these new growth coming in are really nice and healthy. Um, so I'm not concerned with that at all. These are all the ones I started in the basement as well as all the, the totes here and all these pots that are going to be for sale here that I'm go my goal is to have these ready for Mother's Day. Um, and then all of these are also ones that I started and over here <laughs> and then sorry for turning around so much um, I actually have a few that I moved out there just for some space to right now it's about 55 degrees outside so they'll be fine um, that were in this area here so I can get to the table um, all of those are gonna look a little bit different than for example these guys and these are the ones that have overwintered that I planted last year and you can see here's one I transplanted in and here's one that started out here it should be really fun and I'm um, doing so many different colors that I am so excited I am late I, I was late getting them out here a little late getting them started but my goal this year was Mother's Day I think I'm gonna be more like Memorial Day just like last year um, which is fine it's still nice to have some really awesome color and big strong blooms for that early June because what's happening on most um, uh, flowers or, and what can be grown in June, most of it is perennials. And so there's this known little lull in, especially New England, um, for flower farmers about June. And then if you don't have the perennial cuts, ready for you you're going to be hurting in that time unless you plant something like ranunculus the problem with june in north central massachusetts especially is that june we tend to have over 80 degree days and so having them in the tunnel in these beds we will have the shade cloth the 40 percent shade cloth go on our tunnel here actually in probably um just under about a month maybe mid early mid may um, so that the heat um, doesn't get overwhelming for these guys because they will start to go dormant if the temperatures above that 80 degrees I think it's like 70 degrees soil temperature that they really don't love so you want to keep these cool so the shade cloth will help with that and be more controllable in the tunnel if you use the shade cloth um, I will also come in here during the really hot days even with the shade cloth or even before we get the shade cloth and I will wet down these the stone walkway that Jay put in and that will allow the temperature to cool a little bit faster um, and then we'll also be rolling up these sides um, before you know it uh, it's kind of deceiving looking outside right now um, but these sides fully roll up and we have really great wind every day up here so um, that will also come into play for these crates though, this will be the first year I'm growing in these bulb crates, so I'm really excited to try them. I was able to find them for $3 each on Marketplace. We lined them with cardboard, we filled them up, um, and then uh, transplanted the ranunculus in there. Um, these, the goal is after tomorrow, I think, we'll start, we'll move all of these guys out, potentially in a row, even if it's on top of the snow. Um, and I will put, uh, hoops with frost cloth just due to um, bug issues, not bug issues, um, mice issues and things because you can see like this one got dug up a little bit. There's like holes here, holes here. Um, there's a couple holes over there. They really like the corms. So because I know the mice really like the corms, I got to be really careful about moving them out into a, um, a place where they're very easily accessible. So. Um, We'll get them tented. The mice will still be able to get in there. It just might deter them a little bit. And also, um, these are good for down to about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so ideally, the temps are somewhere between like 40s and 50s and 70s during the day. So um, that's what we're looking for, that sweet spot, which will trigger these to really take off. Um, so far in the tunnel, that's been most of the days. Right now, it's 57.4 or so. Um, it has gotten down to about 28 degrees since I put them out here. Um, but the high temp, <laughs> which is crazy, um, the high temp actually got up to about 90 degrees one day when I did not get out here to open that door. Because without the door open, 
it gets really hot really fast being that that's east out here and we're up on the top of a hill and we get all day long sun that's the south Thames to west here so um, when the <laughs> the sun's out it is really hot really fast so you have to make sure that you're watching that very closely I did do ranunculus in some hanging baskets with some pansies um, violas or whatever you want to call them um, and uh, some um, potted plants as well up here so I've got a little bit of a mixture of things going on um, I've got some more uh, pansies and Johnny jump ups or violas in um, in the car actually I need to bring back in here so um, again hoping that these will really start filling out for a Mother's Day sale which would be great once these ranunculus are all moved out from these crates, um, then I will be able to start hardening off some of our early tomatoes. A lot of people will tell you not to do that. If you are a small farm, a small home gardener, I would say don't try this at home kind of thing. Um, but because of the quantity, I think we have 180 or so tomato plants downstairs and um, that are growing. I can afford to do some testing on getting some tomatoes out here a little earlier. Um, so peppers, I won't. Peppers, I really want the low temperature to be about 48 degrees um, at, at minimum. Um, so peppers will wait a little bit longer, but tomatoes, they might um, stunt their growth some, you know, overall, um, slow them down. Um, but with the early girl tomatoes and the mountain fresh tomatoes and the sun gold tomatoes, I can afford to get those out a couple of those out there and then the goal is to actually um, plant them in some grow bags on that back row here and then we'll trellis them up um, so that will allow us to have some tomatoes inside this tunnel this year um, where most of the things as you can tell are actually flowers uh, I thought this was pretty cool today we have our first bud on our fever few and we are April, I don't know, first week of April. So um, maybe April 6th or so, uh, 8th, I can't remember what the date is. Um, but I thought that was really neat. Um, the snapdragons will start actually um, budding up really soon here. I've got more fear of you. I do have some kale in here, um, and uh, so that's good. I don't think any of the lizzies are really, maybe a couple of these will make it, but most of these does not look very good so we tried um, not a problem we've got our big Lizzie order Lizzie Anthus cut flowers order coming in over the next couple weeks and I actually if you are local to North Central Mass or Gardner Mass we are going to be selling some plants in four packs as well as some um, plugs so if you order over 50 you can get the plug size um, for a very discounted rate um, again, but they have to be pick up, so we're not doing any shipping. So that's kind of fun. This year, um, I was really happy. I posted about this before, but the eucalyptus overwintered. So we did transplant some of it. Um, I also started a whole bunch more down in the basement, so we'll get those planted out um, pretty quick. I have these pansies over here. Some great colors. Um... And those are actually giant pansies. And what I did, what didn't know until a couple years ago was you can actually make bouquets out of these. Um, and so my goal is to actually start trimming those back um, and uh, try to get them to, um, to really t get some more height um, so that I can do some potential bouquets for Mother's Day. So another kind of test challenge. You can see I'm not doing that many. I do have some more giant pansies up here um, that are much smaller. These ones might be good for the fall, um, would be my guess. I don't think they'll be <laughs> growing as fast as I would need them for Mother's Day. So lots going on. Um, the original plan was this was going to be Lysianthus, um, this whole 4x5 um, bed or 4x4, whatever it is. Um, we'll see about that. I may end up adjusting for a couple tomatoes. This is the north end, so from the height and the blocking of the sun, that would work pretty well. So lots going on in here, and like I said, we'll try to get the, um, some of the tomatoes out here. 
Um, the big things today are Jay's working on getting the last of the three beds that we have to move for the big tunnel um, out of the way so that we can hopefully um, start working on some of the ground once the snow melts. It's going to be 60s this week, so um, that should melt very quickly. Um, I need to plant some radishes today, um, so I will be planting the um, Easter egg radishes from Johnny Seeds. Um, I've got a new package of, well for this year, and we're going to plant that right in the raised bed here. This is half of the super long, it's about 12 feet long um, bed. And um, then I've got um, to clean up some of the bamboo stakes. I just do a, a light uh, rinse on those. Um, and then I will be starting to um, hopefully uh, stake up some, a bunch of the tomatoes down in the basement. Um, I did do a lot of debudding of the peppers already down in the basement. Um, and I did a lot of pruning this weekend on the peppers. So I know it's not the most exciting thing to see right now in the tunnel. There's not a lot of color, but there's a little bit. Um, and uh, I will say, because of the water situation, I know I killed a bunch of my snapdragons. Um, some of the stock actually seems to be doing okay. Uh, not fantastic. Um, so uh, we'll see again. Um, our big focus right now, though, is really growing produce for um, local food works and growing places organizations, nonprofit organizations. Um, and getting that tunnel up and running so we can fulfill our grant obligations um, for that. So although the flowers are really fun, I'm doing a ton of ranunculus and a ton of lysianthus. I am not um, going to be doing as many varieties as I normally have um, uh, for the flowers as I did last year. Thank you guys for watching and I will, like I said, try to keep up on what we have going on here um, now. Uh, that I got uh, caught up on this last video. I know the last one was really long, so thank you all for, for staying with us on that one um, and seeing the three, last three months in one video. Um, but going forward, we should be uh, a little bit better on keeping up um, now that I am mostly healthy again. So uh, I, we will update you guys all soon. Uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram or Facebook as well. We do post there a little bit more more often. Thanks for watching. You know.